My name is Matheus Milani, and I'm the product manager for the Watchtower platform. I want to talk about one of the most popular capabilities that we have under the Watchtower that we want to talk about today, Auto Discover uh, topology. So, Watchtower platform, our platform for observability, where we can consolidate all the contextual data coming from all these different sources in a unified interface to help operators and SMEs to identify and resolve problems quicker on the ZOS environment. So the Watchtower platform contains different capabilities. We will be very focused on the topology right now, but we have alerting sites, machine learning sites, application profiling, and real-time streaming ZRs. Well, as all story starts with all the actors and actresses, so here we are talking about some specific uh, personas around the mainframe topology. So we are looking to Ashton level one operator and we are looking for Sherman, who is the uh, SME for specific domains. And when we look about a mainframe topology, there are some specific challenges that uh, we hear from customers related to those personas. The first is, when we have problems happening on the ZOS, we look into those problems in a very isolated way. So if we have a problem on the CICS, we look for the CICS problem. When we look problems on the DB2, we look for a DB2 data and start investigating. So they don't have an easy way that they can look into the impact analysis around those problems. So how you know that that specific CICS is connected to a uh, Kix Plex? or has connections with the DB2 subsystem, that is putting data into an MQQ, how the ZOS connect is putting data into the ZOS and accessing the CICS, so it is hard to have, have this information like on the palm of their hands. Second, we know that most of the organizations, they have senior SMEs, that they have been working for 25, 30 years for that specific problem. They know like the entire environment. However, we have a new main framers and they needed to learn. So we have a long learning curve for the mainframe. So they needed to understand not only about the mainframe technology, but also how the environment is set up, how the pieces are connected, what are the different compo the components that are part of a specific application. So they needed to get the data to reduce the learning curve. When we think about the senior SMEs, they may also need some additional information. So if I'm an SME, specifically for the CICS domain. I may not have all the knowledge related to the DB2. I might not need to understand all the deep knowledge about the DB2, but maybe need some basic information to help me with the troubleshooting. So in that data, maybe it's not available, and you re also need to rely on other experts to make sure that you get that information. And for last, asset management. So we know that applications uh, in the environment they are composed not only by mainframe, but also from other uh, platform uh, assets. And we want to make sure that all the mainframe asset, all the components will be added into the, uh, into the CMDB, the configuration management databases as configuration items. So the mainframe topology comes to help on this area. So the topology is really a capability that is really light it was designed to be simple and easy to install. It runs 100% inside the ZOS, and then it will uh, consume all the SMF historical information and show that information for you in a hierarchical visualization and also in the connection between all those different components shown in a web, uh, modern web interface. The topology has a, some specific view, so you can see the data from an infrastructure perspective where you're going to see uh, CISPLEX, LPAR, CICS regions, DB2, transactions, plans, packages, MEQ, and everything from your environment auto-discovered. We also have a second visualization that is related to the dependencies and the connections. This is really about the impact analysis. So we show how a specific transaction is calling another transaction, how a transaction is calling a DB2 plan and package, how we are adding data into an MQQ, how the ZOS Connect is uh, getting into the mainframe with data and calling a CICS transaction. So it really shows the flow from an application perspective. 
And for our last, we have a visualization that we call Relationship Explorer that is responsible more for complex analysis where it would be really difficult to see only with connections. You really need to rely on the deep dive data to see how the different components are connected to each other. Now let's take a look into a quick demonstration of the mainframe topology as well. So in this demonstration, so let me see, I need to click. Okay. In this de de demonstration, we have the a home page of um, topology. It started with the Cisplex, and we are navigating through the hierarchical visualization. We have access to tags, so you can tag your information with application, production, test, the way that you prefer. You can navigate through all that uh, hierarchical visualization and see all the different components that are part of that. So you can keep expanding all that visualization and you can go to low level connections. And then you really can see how one specific component is connected to the other. So in this example here, we are showing how uh, started tasks, they are connected to each other. So like a transaction is connected with another subsystem that is connected with an MQ manager. But you can continue to go deep and you can show really from a transaction level how it is connected with other components on the environment. We start small, just showing the first hops of that connection, but then you can keep expanding that information the way that you desire. Of course, as you keep expanding that, it will get more complex and you see more connections, not only from the components that are on the ZOS, but how the data is coming in, in, uh, getting ingressed into the mainframe from all the ZOS connective or other IP addresses. So you keep, you keep going and like growing that visualization according to the troubleshoot that you need it to do. How um, are you gathering all that information? How do you initially gather the topology? So there is an extractor job batch that runs a, and reads all the SMF data, historical SMF data, and it process loading to the database. And then based on the unit of work ID from CICS and other components on the SMF record, we are able to build the relationship between them. And what happens if something changes? Does it automatically update the topology? So you define when you want to get your topology updated. Okay. So you, there are some customers that are running every day, so there are customers every seven days. So it's really up to the customer and the volume of data that they needed to process that they decide how they want to get the topology updated. So does it have an impact on performance if you run the topology? So when we were at the beginning of the topology, we saw that the processing of the job was considerably high depending on the number of SMF. Now you can parallel your execution. So it reduces considerably the amount of a CPU that you use just to run that job on the day that you decided to run it. When, when you're running that, that sort of loader process, do you load a month, six months, 12 months, or is it, it just depends? It just depends. So there are some customers that they like to extract data only from the production environment during the business hours and they really don't care about what's happening at the middle of the night. Some customers, they say that they don't have like a big change into their infrastructure um, uh, in, a, in a week basis. So they run once a week for, I don't know, maybe a sample of eight hours in one specific day. So it's really up yeah. to the, the customer. And you can decide. So if you have access to the SMF data from all your environments in one single place, you can have just one topology install, or you can like have multiple depending on your business or depending on how many Sysplex you have. So it's like light, it's easy to install, and it really can be flexible and customizable the way that you prefer. Thank you. You're welcome. So just to wrap up, so I think that the architecture, as I mentioned, it's a, a simple architecture. So uh, you can run the topology just in one um, a single um, LPAR. So it introduces on, only one started task. That is started task it contains an embedded database, an SQLite, and also the web services. So the, the extractor, which is the bad job, it will read the SMF data for the period that you would like to. It will get the data loaded into the database, and then it will be presented into the web uh, interface. So there are a few uh, SMF records that we are already supporting from CICS, DB2, ZOS Connect, MQ, and we keep expanding to other domains. 
uh, as we go further with our roadmap, but uh, really it is supposed to be simple and easy to install and then get it running on your environment. Is the simplicity the reason that you've gone for a web user interface rather than try and pull it into uh, the, 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 the rest of the GUI of the Watchtower platform? I think that because like since we have all this data already inside the ZOS, so it made sense just to have some yeah, yeah. web services in there instead yeah. of extend. At some point, of course, we want to give the option also to have this data available outside it so we can enhance our contextual data. But at this point, considering the value that the customer wants for the impact analysis, it makes sense to keep on the platform. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a good answer. Yeah, yeah, I, I quickly mentioned at the beginning, but the, there you have the ability to tag the different components inside the topology as well. We so, you, yeah, yeah, we can create some rules and you can say like this is for application A, application B, or this is prod, this is dev. So you have the ability to really show and visualize one specific application, multiple applications just in one single field. So uh, mainframe topology is also available through the Watchtower platform for all our customers that have CZU, NetMaster, Ops, and Vintage as an additional value to their license.